Dear friends of the Tom Photo channel, good to see you here. I think the topic that comes up most in photography is the image sharpness. Most people want to produce maximally sharp photos. I think this is okay if image sharpness is not used as the single measure of photo quality. Sharpness is only one parameter and to my mind it gets unproportionately much attention. I'll produce a separate video on the philosophical aspects of photo sharpness in the future but our today's topic is about producing maximally sharp images. Let me list, in no particular order, what you can do to achieve maximal sharpness. And I'm not leaving out the obvious for completeness sake. Number one, focus accurately. This is not as self-evident as it may sound. Automatic focusing is good in many situations, but it will depend on your focusing area, focusing technique, etc. And autofocus can miss. Plus, you need to know where to focus. In macro photography, manual focusing is often more accurate, especially when combined with focus peaking. When focusing, always consider what else you want to be in good focus in addition to the main subject. When many objects need to be in focus, focus to the one-third distance point. This is because the depth of field is about twice as deep behind the plane of focus than in front of it. When photographing people or animals, Always focus on the eyes. I cannot think of many exceptions here. Number two, use a tripod. This is always a good idea whether you care about each individual pixel or not. Don't listen when they tell you to buy a very expensive and heavy tripod. Any tripod is so much better than no tripod. And cheaper, lighter tripods are more practical to carry around. Maybe get a monopod if tripod is too large for you. Number three, if you don't have a tripod, use any support you can get. Put your camera on a fence or on the ground or lean against the wall or use your friend's head or shoulders, provided that they've been using head and shoulders, of course. Any small amount of extra support will give a big effect. Some photographers use beanie babies or plain simple bean bags for support. When photographing handheld, practice a stable technique. Don't stretch out your arms, keep the camera against your head, stand on one foot using the other as a side support, lean a bit forward, etc. I'll have a video on that. Number four, make use of the lens's sweet spot. Each lens has an f-stop value at which the lens is the sharpest. If you don't chain yourself to this value in every photograph you take, then paying attention to lens sweet spot will work. Please see my corresponding link below. Number five, understand the depth of field. Depth of field shows how thick the slice of space is in front of you that is going to be in focus if you photograph in that direction. How did you like my definition of depth of field, by the way? The depth of field depends on the f-stop, focal length of your lens, and the distance to the subject. For maximal sharpness, you might be tempted to go with a large f-stop to get a lot of depth of field. But this only works if you want many objects to be in focus. And at a certain point, you actually start losing sharpness when you make the f-stop larger, because diffraction starts to play a role. Number six. Related to the previous point is the advanced concept of focus bracketing. If you are doing macro photography, your depth of field is so shallow that only a narrow plane may be in focus. You can take several photos by focusing to different distances. Then you can combine the photos on your computer to borrow the best parts from each image and produce a uniformly sharp image. Some cameras may do it automatically or semi-automatically for you. And I'll come back to this topic in a future video. Number seven, shutter speed matters. Too often do people think only about f-stop when seeking sharpness. I think the number one reason for a non-sharp photo is inadequate shutter speed. It matters more than the f-stop. Making your shutter speed shorter at the expense of f-stop is often a good advice. The faster your subject is and the longer the focal length, the shorter should the shutter speed be. Do some experiments. Number eight, use image stabilization. I mostly mean optical image stabilization. However, digital image stabilization also exists. This is good advice if you have that option when taking pictures on the go. When using a tripod, it's better to turn the image stabilization off 
because under calm conditions the image stabilization can introduce shaking. You can have image stabilization in your lens or inside the camera body. Number 9. Avoid high ISO. This creates grain in your photos. Generally, the lower the ISO, the cleaner the image. This is a simplification because cameras are different, but landscape photographers tend to love ISO 100. Number 10. Photograph under good lighting conditions if you can. Maybe use a flash if you have to. Any additional lighting can improve things for you and perhaps reduce the shadows in the process. This can all reduce the need for higher ISO. The smaller your camera sensor, the worse the result at high ISO. This is why full frame and medium format cameras perform the best. Number 11. When shooting JPEG, consider that different JPEG conversion algorithms generate different amount of noise. Speaking in the Fujifilm language, the Velvia has more noise than Pronex standard for example, especially under reduced lighting. All JPEG film simulations are not equally good with noise. Number 12. When working with RAW files, you can reduce the amount of noise quite well and the result can be quite amazing. Increasing luminance and then bringing back the details is what you typically want to do. I link my RAW therapy tutorial for you down below. Number 13. Sharpen your image smartly. For example, you could use GIMP for JPEG. You need to be very careful because over sharpening is worse than under sharpening. Try to sharpen only the edges to avoid muddy outcomes. I have produced a special video on that and you can find that link below. Number 14. Take several photos of the same scene and then delete the less sharp ones later at home. My recent video which again is linked in the text box will show you how to measure image sharpness. If you determine which photo is sharpest by eyeballing and pixel peeping, then the photos don't have to be identical. But for automatic detection it is important that the pictures are exactly the same, or else the differences in sharpness need to be very large. Number 15. Remove filters. This gives you a very marginal improvement because modern filters from reputable makers such as Hoya are very high quality. I generally support protective filters to keep your lens protected, but for a very special photo that you're taking for your next National Geographic story, you may remove your protective filter. Number 16. Use lens hood. This helps to remove glare and any light that comes from the unwanted directions. I'd like to add that lens hood is a really good idea for lens protection as well. Number 17. Clean the lens if you have to. One has to be careful here. Lenses don't like to be cleaned actually because this introduces micro scratches. Only clean your lens when you really need to. Otherwise just use a squeezable air blower. Always use air blower before you touch the lens with anything, even with the gentlest of lens cloth. Number 18. Use a sharper lens. If you own several lenses and know their properties, you'll want to choose sharper lenses for those special moments if you can. As a rule, modern lenses are sharper than retro lenses and prime lenses are sharper than zoom lenses. When working with a zoom lens, note that it will have what's called a sweet focal length. This is the focal length value that produces the sharpest image. Number 19. Make sure that your sensor does not have dust. If it does, use an air blower. Sensors can be cleaned, but cleaning them without damaging them requires special tools and experience. Consider having it done by a professional. I think this is usually a good investment. Number 20. Avoid moving subjects in your picture. Obviously this only works if you photograph still life or landscapes, but sometimes you can choose. On a windy day, there are moments with less wind. Wait for the right moment. If you are taking a group picture of people, ask them to stay still. And of course, take a lot of pictures so that everyone would have their eyes open at least once. Number 21. Follow the moving objects with your camera. Don't hold the camera steady. If you follow a passing vehicle at roughly a shutter speed of 125 with a normal lens, you can get a nice and sharp vehicle and beautiful rushing background at the same time. Number 22. Consider cheating. Yes, you heard me right. It's okay to cheat if you're open about it. 
To get the sharpest car with the craziest background, you could consider photographing the shaky background and absolutely still car separately and then photoshop them together, or in my case, gimp them together. I've even photographed everything statically and then later introduced movement in the background digitally. Number 23. My last piece of advice is coming back to the beginning and offering to be less stressed out about image sharpness. The most powerful images and the best pieces of art are not measured in the units of sharpness. In many cases, sharpness does not increase the impact of your photo, and in some cases it can even have the opposite effect. With this, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to spend some quality time with you. If you consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel, that would make me very happy. See you soon. Goodbye.